So in this series of videos, we're going to be introducing prices to this simple and price levels to the simple macro uh, economic model that we've been working with. So last chapter, we introduced this idea of government into our macroeconomic model through uh, government purchases as well as taxation. We also introduced uh, foreign trade in terms of exports and imports. And now we're going to introduce prices and kind of start thinking about this model and deriving this idea of an aggregate demand curve or like a demand curve for the entire economy. And we're also going to introduce this idea of an aggregate supply curve or a supply curve for the entire economy. So let's first start thinking about the demand side of the economy and what happens when price levels change. So let's think of an exogenous change in price level. And so what exogenous means it just happens from outside the model. So let's think about our AE uh, model and think about what happens when the price level goes up. So an increase in the price level is going to reduce the real value of money holdings. So if you have a certain amount of money in the bank and all of a sudden the price level in the economy goes up by you know, 10% or 20%, then that, that money's worth less. The value of that money has gone down. So a, a fall in the price level, on the other hand, is going to raise the value of real money holdings. So it's also going to affect bondholders in terms of both bond issuers and bondholders, but that effect is going to kind of cancel out, um, assuming that no foreign entities own any bonds, which is maybe a, a big assumption right now, but we're going to kind of assume that that price level um, doesn't affect the bond market that much right now. So when we think about an increase in the price level, that's going to reduce the desired consumption. So money, the value of money holdings have gone down, which means wealth has gone down. We know that wealth going down decreases the autonomous part of the consumption function, that little a. So the whole AE curve is going to shift down because of that. There's also going to be effect in the foreign trade market. And so if we remember one of the factors that affects uh, foreign trade and the level of exports as well as imports is going to be the price level. So here the Canadian price level is going up. Well, the Canadian price level is going up, which means Canadian goods are relatively more expensive than they used to be, which means that exports are going down. And really, I mean, really how we should be thinking about this is probably imports or the marginal propensity of import is increasing a bit. So. Again, the AE curve function is shifting down because of this. Maybe that last part causes it to be um, a bit steeper, but that's the idea, is that a rise in the price level is kind of shifting this AE curve down. We can think of the opposite. It's vice versa for, for a fall in the price level. A fall in the price level is going to increase wealth, which is going to increase consumption and shift this AE curve up. And same effect on exports. A fall in the price level is going to make Canadian exports uh, relatively cheaper so more countries will increase how many Canadian goods they buy and we might start going away from foreign goods um, which again would in this case start to flatten the AE curve. So let's talk about uh, what this means graphically. So I'm just going to bring up a, a whiteboard here. All right so we just said that the price level increasing price level increasing has two effects the first thing that's going to happen is consumption is going to go down and that's because wealth is decreasing which means that little a is going down at the same time exports are going down Canadian goods are becoming relatively more expensive so exports are going down so the third thing that we kind of mentioned which is going to relate to the slope of this uh, aggregate demand curve is that um, the marginal propensity to import is likely to go up. So let's talk about what this looks like graphically. Hopefully I've moved in enough so I have enough space to talk about this. Let's move it back up. All right. All right, so let's draw the same AE and Y axes that we've been drawing so far, because they're not really straight. So we have this capital A, which is the intercept of our AE function. And then we have Z, which is the marginal propensity to spend, 
which is the slope of our AE function. And then we had this equilibrium condition where AE equals Y. This is how we got that equilibrium Y uh, last chapter. And so what's happening here is that let's say the price level goes up. So the price level goes up and then we have these two things happening. So we have little a going down and we have exports going down, which means this whole uh, intercept is going to shift down. Now, if at the same time M is increasing, then the slope is getting steeper as well. So let's put an A prime where this difference is this change in A. Here's our new AE prime function. And now our Y has gone down. So this is the change in Y. So as the price level goes up, Y is going down. So we have this inverse relationship between the two. And we're going to use this to think about deriving something called the aggregate demand curve. So that's what we're going to do next. So what the aggregate demand curve is doing is just simply relating um, equilibrium real GDP to the price level. And so for any given price level, the aggregate demand curve is going to show the level of real GDP for which the desired expenditure equals the actual GDP. So it's, so it's showing at any given price level where we're in equilibrium on that AE equals Y portion uh, of this model. And so what changes in this price level is going to do is it's going to move us along this giant aggregate demand curve. So just like um, demand curves in microeconomics from the first term, a change in price is going to be a movement along this aggregate demand curve. So let's think about deriving this curve. So what we're going to do now is kind of derive this aggregate demand curve by varying the price level in our AE um, our, the AE part of our function and then having this relationship between the price level and real GDP. So that's what we're going to do now. So let's click on the next slide and it's going to be blank for me. It should be in front of you. I'm going to bring up a, a whiteboard and let's talk away through this derivation. So let's just draw our trusty AE and Y graph. So here's this AE function, this original one has a capital A intercept, has a slope of Z, and this is our AE function. So we have this equilibrium condition A, let's make sure that's on the screen still, AE equals Y. And then here's our original equilibrium there, given this uh, price level and given all the other um, factors in our model. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to draw another set of axes below this and we're going to do it in black as well. But now we're going to have real Y on the X axis and we're going to have the price level on the Y axis. So we're trying to re relate the price level to real Y or real GDP. So let's start varying the price level. So let's imagine with this first AE curve, we're at this price level zero. And let's imagine that the price level increases from P0 to P1. Well, we know that uh, consumption is going to fall and exports are going to fall from before. So we have this downward uh, shift of this AE function. And everything else is the same. Maybe I'll keep the colors consistent. This is the AE curve. But now the second AE curve is a function of this uh, higher price level. So let's think. So this is the first thing that happened. I'll just keep the same little dot. And so let's say the price level goes up again. Price level increases from P1 to P2. Again, we know that consumption is going to decrease and exports are going to go down. So if we looked on our top graph here, we have this AE function. Now it's a function of P2. 
and we're going to see an even lower level of equilibrium GDP in this uh, AE uh, part of the model. And so what we're going to do on this bottom graph, so this one down here, is to plot the relationship between our Ys and our price levels. P0 and Y0, P1 and Y1, P2 and Y2. And so if you notice, as the price level got higher and higher, Y was getting lower and lower. So let's, let's plot this first point. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. And so we're going to plot P2 and Y2. So this is P2, it's pretty high price level, and Y2 is a fairly low level of equilibrium GDP. And then we see if we lower the price level a bit, back to P1, at P1 we had a bit higher equilibrium GDP. So this point would be Y1 and P1, and so on and so forth. So here's the last point, and this is Y0 and P0. And so we're kind of, if we think about graphing out every possible price level, we're going to have this negative relationship between the two. And we're going to call this relationship the aggregate demand curve. So to derive the aggregate demand curve, we're simply changing the price level in our AE function and graphing out this relationship between prices and equilibrium GDP in our AE model. And we're going to call this the aggregate demand function. So now that we understand how to derive the AD function or where this aggregate de uh, demand function comes from, let's think about what's going to cause it to shift around. And what's going to cause it to shift around is any factor besides price that's going to shift this AE curve around. So let's just go to the next slide. And again, we're just going to use our whiteboard to kind of explain that slide. So again, we're going to have on the top this AE and Y uh, graph that we've been working with. And the bottom, we're going to have this new graph which relates the price level to real GDP or real Y. All right, so let's just, just draw this initial equilibrium up here. So we have this capital A, we have, um, this is the AE function, the slope is Z, we have this equilibrium condition, this 45 degree line where AE equals Y, and we have this equilibrium level of Y, let's call it like Y zero or something like that. And we're gonna hold, um, so, we just talked about how we could derive this AD curve by varying the price level. So let's say this is the AD curve for this graph. So now we're going to think about what happens in, when something in capital A changes. So let's say um, for whatever reason wealth increases, for example, or anything in, in capital A. So we know wealth is going to increase consumption, which is going to shift this capital A up. Let's hold prices constant. So if we remember from our graph um, before, a change in anything in capital A shifts this curve up which causes this equilibrium to go up. And this change in Y is going to be equal to the change in A divided by 1 minus Z, right? And if you remember, 1 over 1 minus Z is our simple multiplier. So this is actually going to correspond to a shift in the AD curve. So again, what we're going to do here is we're going to hold the prices constant. So let's just give some level P0, and we're holding prices constant, so they're both a function of P0. And let's imagine P0 is this point right here, P0 and Y0. And so now what we're doing is we're holding prices constant, but we're changing the wealth. What this is going to cause is the whole AD curve to shift in 
if we hold constant prices, this shift is going to be equal to the simple multiplier times that change in A. So that's how these two models are relating. In the sense that the larger the simple multiplier, the bigger the shift of this aggregate demand function is going to be.